The Toronto Raptors started preseason with 21 players, but your NBA roster is technically only allowed 15 on it. So as the Raptors head into their 30th season, who are the players that still remain in Toronto and what can we expect from them this season? Let's get into it. Welcome back to Amateur Sports, the YouTube channel completely dedicated to Toronto Raptors content in videos and streams. And hey, coming soon, we have merch for the channel. I can't reveal any photos just yet, but it's in production. So stay tuned for more information. But the Raptors are about to start their NBA season, their 30th season in the league. And it's definitely not shaping up to be one of the best seasons they've ever had, but it could be the start of a journey this team takes on to rise back up to the top of the NBA standings. It's been branded as the first year of the rebuild, but we still want to see production and we still want to see competitiveness out there on the court, especially at the start of the season. So let's take a look at who the Raptors had for their training camp roster and who remains today based on the decisions that were made in terms of cutting players. So as I said, the Raptors started with 21 players for preseason. That was kind of a lie. They actually started with a little bit more for preseason as they had some players on the books that were on Exhibit 10 deals who they were either going to sign and then waive immediately just for bookkeeping purposes or they had signed and waived already because they're on those Exhibit 10 deals. If you don't know what an Exhibit 10 deal is, it's basically an additional financial incentive for you to sign with that team's G League affiliate. In this case, for the Raptors, it's the Raptors 905. So if you sign for the Raptors on an Exhibit 10 deal and they cut you, if you play a certain amount of games with the 905, you do get that bonus and with the G League salaries in play, that bonus can be fr pretty fruitful in the $77,000 range. But the Raptors, when it comes to their NBA roster, I said they're only allowed 15 players on it, which is kind of true, but it was also kind of a lie. You're allowed 15 players on your NBA roster, plus an additional three players on two-way contracts, which makes it 18 players in total. But really, it's just 15 players on those standard NBA deals. So let's break down how things went down on decision day for the Raptors and their NBA roster. I know it's been a couple of days here, but we're going to start with the Exhibit 10 contracts in play for the Raptors. There were guys like Dylan Dissu and Quincy Gurrier, as well as Kevin Obanor, who were already signed and waived by the Raptors and are now going to be playing with the Raptors 905 in the G League. But for preseason, three of those Exhibit 10 players actually had opportunities to earn a spot on the roster through training camp. Those three players were Jamison Battle, Jamias Ramsey, and Jared Roden. Now, when it comes to these Exhibit 10 deals, it hasn't really worked out the way we were expecting because Jared Roden was waived, was set to go to the Raptors 9 of 5 on that Exhibit 10 deal. However, the Charlotte Hornets snapped him up on waivers and have signed him to a two-way deal, so he's going to be going to Charlotte instead. Now, the caveat to this, that if he does eventually lose that contract and does go back to the G League, the Raptors 9 of 5 do have those G League rights, but for now, he's going to be playing with the Charlotte Hornets. As for Jamias Ramsey on the Exhibit 10 deal, he was waived, and unfortunately, his rights in the G League, much like Jared Roden, whose rights belong with the 905, if he ever does lose that two-way contract, Jamias Ramsey's G League rights reside with Oklahoma City. So, OKC would have to trade those G League rights to the Raptors so that he can play with the 905, though in situations like this, it is typical for that to transpire, and the Raptors, in some capacity, will acquire his G League rights from OKC. It just hasn't quite happened as of yet. Now, the exciting story from the Exhibit 10 players is Jamison Battle, who had the opportunity to fight for a spot on the Raptors roster, and guess what? He did it. It's very rare, and you seldom see Exhibit 10 players actually go past one of the players on one of the two-way contracts or on the 15-man roster. But that's exactly what we have in this certain scenario here because Jamison Battle was very impressive in Summer League, earning this chance to compete at camp and was impressive enough in preseason that he actually took away one of the two-way spots on the roster. The two-way contract is what it kind of sounds like. It's a two-way contract where you can play in the NBA as well as with the Raptors 905 in the G League. A lot of times you'll be seeing these two-way players, especially in a rebuilding year, and especially for a Raptors team keen on development, doing double duty, where sometimes you'll be playing uh, one night with a 905, one night in the NBA, and sometimes you'll see games on the same day where players will be participating in both of these games. Nonetheless, the three players that were on two-way contracts heading into preseason were Ulrich Shamshe, the recent 57th overall pick in the NBA draft, DJ Carton, who was with the Raptors for a period of time last season, despite the injuries, and Brandon Carlson, the 25-year-old rookie out of Utah. And, well, 
Like I said, one of these players was cut. Jamison Battle impressed in summer league, impressed in preseason. He shot the ball really well, decent size as a wing. The Raptors wanted to work with that, and they were so keen on working with Battle that they decided to part ways with Brandon Carlson, who was waived by the Raptors, no longer has a two-way contract, and because he's a rookie, there's no ownership rights over him. He's likely going to be entering the G League draft, where... A lot of teams are probably going to be lining up for a player who's seven feet tall, can kind of protect the rim, and can kind of space the floor on the offensive end of the court. I'm sure the Raptors would have liked to work with him a bit more, but the preference resided again with Jamison Battle, who joins DJ Carden as two players who will likely have a lot of time in the G with the 905, along with Ulrich Shamshe, who had a decent summer league, but kind of proved in preseason that he wasn't just quite ready to step up to the next level. But I am excited to see the journey of development for Shamshe with the 905, potentially getting some minutes here and there in the NBA. As for DJ Carden, honestly, wasn't super impressed in preseason, so hopefully he can improve some things in the G League with 905, where he's going to get some really good game time, I would imagine. Now, for the rest of the Raptors roster, the 15 guys on standard NBA contracts, there was really not a lot of drama this season. Usually there's people competing for that final roster spot. That wasn't the case this season. The Raptors entered preseason with 14 players on guaranteed contracts. They also had the three two-way guys, the three Exhibit 10 guys, and then the 21st player was Bruno Fernando. Bruno Fernando's contract situation was a little bit curious. The Raptors, we know, are lacking in center depth and rim protection. Bruno Fernando, to a certain extent, can bring that, but his contract was an interesting one. If he made the Raptors opening day roster, his contract of around $2 million was guaranteed for the entire season. That's it. Guaranteed all year. If he didn't make the Raptors opening night roster, contract was gone. No more money would be given to Fernando. And in the end, it was still debatable. There was nobody going in to take that final roster spot from him, but there had to have been a debate if the Raptors would look at the waiver wire or if they would just have that open roster spot In the event they want to make a trade somewhere where they take back additional players for Bruce Brown or Chris Boucher and have that slightly additional financial flexibility. In the end, Bruno Fernando was deemed to have done enough. I would say based on what I saw from him in preseason, that was more so down to, hey, we really don't have good center depth here. We have this guy who at least has worked with us a little bit. Let's just keep him around. I don't think Fernando really earned this final roster spot. It's just, we had it. We kind of need a player in that position. So it's kind of like, eh, what the heck? Let's give it to him. Personally, I probably would have gone for the open roster spot and additional financial flexibility. So that leaves us with the 14 players that are on those guaranteed contracts. You've got your guards, Emmanuel Quickly, Jamal Shedd, David Mitchell. You've got your shooting guards, who I would describe as the shooting guards at least, in Grady Dick and Jacoby Walter. You've got your forwards, Scotty Barnes, RJ Barrett, Oche Abaji, Bruce Brown, Chris Boucher, Garrett Temple, who's more like a coach making a player salary, but it is what it is. They like to have him around. And then you have your bigs, of course, Jakob Pertl, Kelly Olynyk, Jonathan Mobo, and finally, Bruno Fernando. That is the makeup of the 18 players on the Raptors roster for the upcoming season. Those 15 plus the two-way contracts we mentioned in Jamison Battle, Ulrich Shamshe, and DJ Carden. When it comes to this roster, look, there's some exciting players involved 100%, but especially from what we saw from preseason, the latter stages of the depth of this team, I think there's some good players here, but it's not going to be a team that is ultra, ultra competitive going into the season, but that does not mean the team can't find some sort of success on the court. As far as what we learned in preseason from what we saw from these guys out there, I would say primarily, I think defense is once again going to be an issue for this team. They're just not going to be able to get enough stops on a consistent basis to be competitive in enough games to really challenge for a solidified playoff position. But the East is going to be so bad that this team might be in the mix for a playing tournament spot. You can be in the low 30s for wins and still be in the mix in the final couple weeks of the season to make the play-in tournament based on the projections for the NBA's Eastern Conference. Despite the fact that there could be some defensive troubles, despite the fact there could be some troubles in the win-loss category, what we also learned is that this can be a fun team to watch as well. As long as you're not going in with these monster expectations, look, Scotty Barnes, RJ Barrett, Emmanuel Quickly, 
these guys are fantastic players. It's going to be really fun to watch these guys and watch the development paths getting started or, you know, that have already been started with guys like Grady Dick, Jacoby Walter, and others in the mix. This is going to be a team that won't win the most amount of games, but it could be fun for Raptors fans to enjoy, especially if they enjoy the journey as the season gets started for the Toronto Raptors. And along with the season starting tomorrow for the Raptors, we'll have a season prediction and preview going out on this channel. Make sure you stay tuned for that video coming out tomorrow. But if you did enjoy this one, make sure you do drop a like. Consider subscribing to the channel for more Raptors content all throughout the regular season and beyond. We'll see you again next time for another video here on Amateur Art Sports. And make sure you keep an eye out for more information regarding Amateur Art Sports merch. So excited.